This is swell, Eddie, but when we change out of these, what are we going to change into? Overalls. We got it when we get to Beaver Dam. Hey, Eddie. Look, I'm a civilian. Ah, feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, no more buttons to keep shined up, no flaps on the pockets. Say, what does the Army want to give you pockets for anyway, if you can't put nothing in them? I don't know, the Army wasn't so bad in a lot of ways. Not for you, maybe. A lot depends on whether you're giving the orders or getting them. Me? I was always on the receiving end. You know, Chuck, these clothes even smell different. Yeah. That clears up a great mystery. You know, ever since we got back, I've been thinking somebody must be following me around with a horse blanket. But all the time it was me. <laughs> Ten years from now, you'll be prouder of that uniform than anything you've got. Except I won't be able to get into it. You watch. Come 4th of July and that Beaver Dam Legion band leads off the parade, you'll be the first one to... Not me. These dogs of mine have agitated all the gravel they're going to. Say, Eddie, are you sure we're going to enjoy life on a mink farm? Yeah, it'll be ours, won't it? So would a hangover be, but that's no sign you're happy with it. What does a mink do? Does it bark, growl, mew, a coo? It makes more minks. Try this for size. Thanks. I hope you're going to take these with you. Yeah, we'll, we'll be back for them. You wrap them up. Here, put this best with them, will you? Look, mister, you didn't even come close. What do you think I am, a midget? A tall one. <laughs> Look here, brother. I'm a customer. I came here with money. I mean, he came here with money. I mean, it's half my money, and I want to buy a hat, and I want it to fit. And I don't want to be cheered up by a fathead like you. Now, start building up goodwill and break out a sky piece that'll make me look human. Why did you try the place at the corner? What you want's a mask. How do you like this? I'll take this one. Yes, sir. Go on, get him a hat. Why don't you try to be nice to the customers? I've been nice to customers for 22 years. Now I don't have to till the war's over. We'll try another one for size. Try it for color, too. I don't mind if I attract a little attention. This guy's got a morosis. Neurosis. Same thing. Try this. Thanks. 22 oh. years, doing everything but wag my tail, just begging people to buy hats. Used to make me sick to my stomach. Oh, and I can't fit a customer. You know what happens to me? What? I get a warm feeling inside me. I'll take it. Come on, Happy, how much do we owe you? $210. Ten. You can put those bags with the uniforms. We'll pick the whole thing up later this afternoon. Come on, Chuck. Eh, pardon me. Get it on. No more salutes. What a great feeling. Makes a fellow want to spend a little of the money he saved up. We'll spend it on minks. Uh, right now we're going to the National Mink Breeders Association and bone up on all the material they have there. Eddie, you know about them minks, not the way I look at it. A mink's nice, you know, it's cute. But I keep asking myself, is it a career? Oh, no, Chuck, we've been planning on this for two years. You're not going to back out now, are you? No, but this is the first time we've ever been to New York. Well, we'll come back in a few years and really do the town up right. A few years? I'm not as young as you are, Eddie. I can't wait as long. See? <coughs> Chest. I gotta make hay while I'm still middle-aged. Well, that's why you can't afford to dissipate. Oh, Eddie, think how lonesome it's gonna be. Way out in Wisconsin with nothing but minks for company. Hey, Eddie, our train don't leave till six. Let's drop in this gin mill and kind of build ourselves up to it, eh? No. Oh, Eddie, can't we even see Central Park or take a look at Grant's tomb or something? I'll tell you what we'll do, Chuck. When we get on the train, we'll celebrate all the way to Beaverdam. How's that? No, Eddie, I just don't think I'm a mink man. Hello, Mr. Pemberton. You must have the wrong fellow, bud. No, we just trusted the wrong man. Two years is a long time, but not long enough to forget you. Look, get on up the street, will you, Joe? Me and my partner don't like strangers. Who's a comic? I said blow, didn't I? Want me to twist that nose of yours around so it'll catch rainwater? Come on, now, blow, blow. Well, why didn't you say you was a cop? Look, officer, you're making a mistake. I'm Eddie York. This is Chuck. Let's move. I've got a car around the corner. Well, but we haven't done it. Move before I get rough. Oh, no, no. You're mistaken, John. I do like it, of course. Here he is, Mr. Arnold. Uh, sorry, John. Hello, Mr. Pepperton. Hello. Come over to the fire. Make yourself comfortable. Your friend, too. Eddie, this ain't the police station. These guys ain't cops. Keep quiet. Can't you see Mr. Arnold's on the phone? Take off that hat. The strong oh. says sit down, make yourself comfortable. Oh. Excuse me, John. Uh, hello, company. Uh, sit down, gentlemen. No, look, I don't know what to... Oh, uh, where were we? 
Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yes, I believe you're right, John. I believe it is an original. But uh, isn't that a little too steep? <laughs> yeah, fine, you ask him. I'll hold the line. Beautiful, isn't it? A private party owns it, so my dealer thinks I can buy it for 5,000. 5,000 for that? For nothing but a book? First edition? Tell me, do you read Shakespeare? No. Uh, you do read? Sure I read. Where do you get off asking a question like that? Don't follow it, Mr. Arnold. I'm afraid our friend doesn't know that magnificent quotation from Sand and Spray. How does it go exactly? Oh, yes. The man who doesn't read good books has no advantage over the man who can't read them. Oh, uh, yes. I'll make out a check. Mm hmm. All right. Goodbye. Five thousand. Beautiful. Well, we've missed you, Mr. Pemberton. My name isn't Pemberton. It's York, Eddie York. And I'm Chuck Gibson. You got us mixed up with somebody else. We're mink ranchers. Mink? Let me see. Mink. Isn't that a rather dangerous business? Look. Oh, no, no, no. I was not referring to the physical danger. What danger? What's he talking about? I was referring to that nervous disposition of the female mink. Didn't you hear about it? Oh, yes. A sharp sound, a clap of thunder, anything out of the ordinary, and they turn upon their young and devour them. Did you hear that, Eddie? They eat each other up. A swell business you're getting us into. Fur and all? Fur and all. Makes quite an expensive dinner. <laughs> now look, Arnold. Mr. Arnold. Mr. Arnold. We had things to do, but we'll sit here and listen to you till 5.30 if that's what you want. But my name isn't Pemberton. Your name is Pemberton. Francis Pemberton. And two years ago you placed a bet with me for $12,000. And Pegasus in the sixth race at Hialeah. Well, of course, since then you've been, uh, let's say, a trifle difficult to locate. This guy is a bookmaker. It costs a great deal of money to indulge in my hobbies, Mr. Pemberton. They've thrown us together again. You must pay me. Here, I'll show you. I just want to get my wallet. An excellent idea. Give him room, Timothy. There, my discharge card. You see, in black and white, Eddie York. Mm hmm. Eddie York. <laughs> I've never been an admirer of your character, Mr. Pemberton, but I'd never have believed you'd go to so much pain to avoid payment of an honest debt. Well, not more than 3,000. I'll credit it to your account. Now, wait a minute. Mr. Long, you're out of condition, Timothy. And I must say you've improved a great deal, Mr. Pemberton. I'm pleasantly surprised. How about that money? No. No, I had hoped we might settle this thing sensibly, but I see now it will be very difficult. I've always envied the rich, I confess, but I've never been able to understand them. Here you are, young man, with every advantage, everything to live for, actually risking your life to cheat me out of money which you wouldn't even miss. Not miss? That's every cent I've got in the world. We've got! I shall call upon you tomorrow for the remaining 9,000, and please, please have it ready. Murder is rather frowned upon this day in my profession, but, uh, I don't know, I simply cannot bear the idea of life people owing me money. Makes me very nervous. Very much like female mink, by the way. Mm -hmm. Please drop them where you pick them up, Mr. Long. We'll have the cops up Don't here. use that word. Mr. Arnold doesn't like it. Goodbye, gentlemen. The parting's only temporary. Come on, Neander. Well, what do we do now? Well, we'll just go to the police and go right back up there and... Hey, did you get the name of that street that building was on? No. Oh, fine. Did you get the license number of the car? Oh. Smart boys. Hey, officer. Officer, my friend and I here... Well, well got... Mr. Pemberton, I'm glad to see you back. And sober. <laughs> Look, I'm not, Mr... Never mind, just just skip it. Are you in trouble of any kind? Oh, no, no, no. Can I do anything for you? No, 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 not a thing. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Hey, Eddie, I'm beginning to think maybe you do look like this guy Pemberton. No. Yeah. Hey, Chuck. 
I've got an idea. It's about time. Look, all we have to do is find this Pemberton, explain to him what happened, get our money back, and we're on our way. Right. Let's see, uh, phone book. This ain't no main chateau, brother. Are you sure this is the place? That's what it said in the phone book. Uh-uh. They look like detectives. Yeah. So what? We haven't done anything wrong. Come on. I don't know. I think we're walking into trouble. We want to Mr. see Mr. Pemberton. Pemberton. Good evening, sir. Here we go again. Your hat, sir? This is a surprise. There's a fire in the library, sir. Now tell the rest of the family you're home. Uh, whiskey, sir? No, thanks. Hey, I'll have one. Very good, sir. I got a hunch I'm gonna need it. Well, Pemberton isn't here. What do we do now? How should I know? You're the mastermind. You got us into this. You and your minx. Well, maybe he's got a rich aunt or something. We ought to be able to get 3,000 bucks out of somebody around here. Hey, Eddie, look. To Joan, my good right arm. Don't ever leave me, Francis. Say, no wonder that book he collared us, Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> sure looks like a sourpuss, doesn't he? Yeah, looks just like you. Thanks. Francis, well, you might have written us something. How are you? And how is Mexico? Mexico? Oh, look, I want to apologize for coming in here like this. Well, it's quite all right. You don't have to apologize for coming into your own home. Uh, Francis never remembers to introduce anyone. Mr... Gibson, just call me Chuck. Oh, good. You can call me Joan. Are you staying, Chuck? Uh, 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 just for a few days, until I build up my strength. Chuck's staying just until I can pay him some money I owe him. Yeah, you see, I'm crazy about Minx, and I was going to buy a farm just as soon as I get this 3000 out of Eddie, uh, uh, Francis. 3000 well, I see your luck is running true to form, Francis. Why don't you write him a check? Well, I would, only... Only Chuck wants cash, don't you, Chuck? Yeah, there's something about that old cash. <laughs> something about good old hard cash, I guess. Uh, well, there might be that much in the safe. The safe? <laughs> of course, I uh, I don't know why I didn't think of that. Uh, Joan, I'm... I'm awfully tired. Uh, <laughs> quite a long trip. Would you, uh, Would you get $3,000 out of the safe and... Give it to Chuck, and then we'd be all square, wouldn't we, Chuck? And how? All right. Mm. Well, you'll have to give me the combination, Francis. Oh. It's, uh, right, four, left, It doesn't seem possible, but I uh, just can't seem to remember it. <laughs> well, it isn't serious. Uncle Wills can give it to you. Well, that's right. I forgot about Uncle Wills. Uh, could you call him or something? Uh, we'd sort of like to get this thing settled, wouldn't we, Chuck? You could say that again. I can't call him tonight. He's in Washington, but I'm sure he'll be in his office in the morning. In the morning. I wonder what happened to that drink. Oh, is that for you? I'm terribly sorry. I told Bert's not to bother. I thought it was for Francis. I'll have it brought right in. At the same time, I'll speak to the housekeeper about your room. Excuse me. Looks to me like they got you pegged for kind of an elbow bender around here, my friend. Yeah. Chuck, this is all mixed up. I came here to explain that I'm not Francis, but all of a sudden, I'm Francis. We've got to get out of here. Just when we're all set to get back our three geolings? So we'll come back in the morning. Eddie, sometimes I feel like Mr. Arnold. I don't understand you. I wonder who that girl was. That's Joan. Yeah, I know, but I mean, what does she do around here? I don't know. What's that difference? Well, maybe she's my wife. Is that bad? Oh, Chuck, I can't do it. It's wrong. It's just wrong. Oh, look, Lunkhead, it isn't our fault this Pemberton doesn't pay his bookie, is it? No. And unless we squat here until we get it, we whistle for our three grand, don't we? Yeah, I guess so. Then what's the matter with your noodle? Tell me that. I wish I'd noticed if she had on a wedding ring. With that kind of dame, a man don't usually pay much attention to her fingers. Uh-oh. Here comes some more of your relations. 
Well, well, well. I thought we'd got rid of you. Not back to stay, I hope. Yeah, is you all right? The same worthless scallywag, wine, women, and song. What they do, run you out down there? Thanks, buddy. Ain't you having one? Uh, no. You ain't? Well, well. I see you're still picking your friends from the Tenderloin. Who are you, his old man? I could sue you for that. I'm just his grandpa. The only Pemberton that ever did an honest day's work in three generations. Now, Grandpa, don't mind him, Francis. You know how he is. He doesn't mean half what he says. Uh, yes, I know how he is. He, he, he doesn't mean half what he says. <laughs> Why don't you open the window and throw the old cockroach out in the petunias? Him? Ha! If he'd do that, I'd still think there was some hope for him. Oh, no. When there's any throwing out to be done, he runs down to Mexico and lets somebody else do the dirty work. Don't you, Francis? So, I still think I'm going to sue you. Please, Grandpa. You know what the doctor said. No excitement after dinner. The doctor? That hypocritical old pill peddler. I'll outlast him by ten years. And you, too. Please, I met you. All right, but it ain't mutual. What a guy. If you come upstairs, Chuck, I'll show you to your room. Good night, Francis. Aren't you coming, Francis? Yes, I think I'd better go up, too. I have a few things I want to talk over with Chuck. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is the way I was really meant to live, Eddie. I seem to fit right into it. This isn't a bed. It's a cloud with skin on it. Hey, you've been stalling long enough. Just douse the light on your way out. On my way out? Where'll I go? This is my boudoir. You must have a room somewhere. Oh, I don't know where it is. Besides, there might be somebody in it. That's your problem. Well, good night, Eddie. Move over, Chuck. I'm sleeping in here. Are you kidding? So here's where you are, you bandy-legged warthog. What have I done now? Nothing, as usual. The point is, what are you going to do? Uh, about what? About what? It could happen, I suppose, a man being born without any feelings at all. But I didn't think I had to live with him. What are you talking about? Young man, I'm talking about the little lady down the hall. Two years you've been away, and she's been crying her heart out every night. She has? Yes, she has. Now you march right over there and do something about it. She's waiting for you. Well, now get. Nighty night. Go on. Go on. Hey, Grandpa. Douse the light. Oh. Go on. Go on. I was just going to knock. Well, won't you come in? Oh, no, no, not, not if you were going somewhere. It wasn't anything important. Come on in. Uh, Grandpa said you wanted to see me. He did? Well, maybe I was mistaken. No, please don't go. Sit down. I think you'd be a lot more comfortable if you take this chair, Francis. Oh, no, 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 thanks, Les. This is perfectly comfortable. Francis, is something bothering you? Uh, bothering me? Yes. You've been acting rather strangely since you came home. Oh, have I, Joe? Well, you know how it is. A guy like me, lots of things bother him. Well, they never used to. Well, I'm, I'm different than I used to be. I'd like to believe that. No, it's true. I'm practically not the same person at all. I'll be convinced when I see it. You and Grandpa think I'm pretty much of a heel, don't you? I wouldn't say that exactly. Spoiled, I think, is a better word for it. Spoiled and perhaps a little spineless now and then. Well, I asked for it. Francis, what about Mary? Mary? Yes, Mary. 
what I... I was sort of hoping we could forget about that. I suppose you'd like to forget about Stephanie, too. Stephanie? You treated her even worse than you did Mary, although you probably don't realize it. Are you... She's had a pretty tough time, huh? Yes. You didn't make things very easy for me, either, running off to Mexico the way you did. No, I... Uh, I guess I didn't. Don't you want to see her? Who? Stephanie, of course. Well, uh, Aren't you even curious about her? Don't you want to know how she is? Why? Come on. I'll take you in to see her. You mean she's here? Right here in the house? Naturally she's here. Trust Uncle Wills to see to that. The detectives won't let her leave. But why? Is she violent or something? Stephanie? Violent? Are you sure you're quite yourself, Francis? Well, no. I mean, uh, well, with you here, it's a peculiar sort of setup, isn't it? I, I'd better not go in tonight. Uh, yeah, maybe she's asleep. Uh, and besides, I'd better look in on Chuck. He might need something. Francis Pemberton, the least you can do is let her see you after two years. Sometimes you can be very puzzling. She's in your sitting room. We'll only stay a minute. Hey, Joan! She's awake. Yes, I, I see she is. Is that you, Aunt Joan? Yes, darling. I've brought someone to see you. She's insisted on sleeping there ever since you left. Well, did she call you Aunt Joan? Yes. Well, then she's not... I mean, you're not... It's usually the fate of most female poor relations to become aunts, isn't it? Yes, I guess so. Well, you make a very nice aunt. I've tried to, Francis. Don't you know who this is, Stephanie? Someone you haven't seen in a long, long time. Daddy! It really is Daddy, isn't it? Yes, dear, it really is. How are you, Stephanie? Fine, or I don't seem to know you very well, do I? Well, we'll have to do something about that, won't we? Are you going to live here now? Well, why? Well, I, I don't know about that. I wish you would. I bet Daddy will let Mommy come to see me, Aunt Joan. Daddy just came in to say hello, darling. It's sleepy time now. You want Mommy come to see me, Daddy? Why, sure, I guess so. Do you really mean that, Francis? Why, uh... Well, sure I mean it. You won't change your mind? Well, no, why should I? Mother certainly ought to be able to see her own child. Tomorrow, Daddy? Why, uh, yes, I guess so. Well, uh, good night, Stephanie. Good night, Daddy. Good night, dear. Sleep tight. <laughs> Francis, Mary's going to be so happy. Mary? Oh, yes, Mary. Uh, I want to take back everything I said. I wouldn't have believed it, but you have changed. Something has happened to you. That was for Stephanie and for Mary. Good night, Francis. Good night. It's you. Chuck, we can't stay here. What's the matter? Did your wife throw you out? No, she's not my wife. She's some kind of a relative. But I've got a wife. Congratulations. I mean, Pemberton's got a wife. And I'm a father. I mean, Pemberton's a father. Very interesting. But is there any reason I should miss out on my sleep? Look, all the time this Pemberton was away, he wouldn't let his wife see the kid. Or this Uncle Wills wouldn't. And I just put my foot in it and said she could. If we don't duck out of here, I'm going to be in the middle of a family reunion. Just a minute. Do you happen to realize how much $3,000 amounts to? Yeah. And but... what about them minks? Well, it's different with you. You don't have to go on being this guy. I feel like a like a crook. Now, listen, Jughead, I know how you feel. Put the money down that safe is our money. And if you just don't get excited, we'll get it back. We only have to stay until morning. Yeah, but... <clears throat> nah, you've been doing all right so far. What do you mean? Lipstick. Oh, well, she just uh -huh. thinks I'm... Now, take it easy, my friend. Yeah. You're just a natural-born Casanova. <laughs> Hey, Bert. 
I just made a great discovery. You know that way of life they told us in the army we were fighting for? Yes, sir. Well, this is what they were talking about. I never really understood those guys because from what they said, it sounded to me like I was fighting to get right back behind the eight ball where they drafted me from. But now, ha, everything is perfectly clear. Greetings, my friend. Pull up a chair and break your fast. You still in bed? Still in bed and having myself a small tidbit to get my strength back from having slept so hard during the happy night. Between times, I'm having what is known as a bird bath. Well, get up. Joan has a call in for Uncle Wills. As soon as she gets the combination, we'll be pulling out of here. You're a man without a soul. Eddie, an idea just come to me. With his nibs down in Mexico, what's to keep us from sort of snuggling down here? Nothing. Except it isn't our house. So what? Possession is nine points of the law. If Pemberton shows up, we'd say he's an imposter and have him slung in a pokey. Nobody likes him anyhow. Oh, you're out of your mind. Now, come on, get out of there. All right, but Minx was never like this. Ah, yes, sir. <laughs> when the rich get wrinkles, I guess it's just from laughing too much. Here, get your clothes on. We may be leaving here in ten minutes. Daddy! Oh, Daddy! Does that mean you? Yeah, I uh, told the kid I'd come out and play with her. I'll be down in a minute, Stephanie. Hurry! Now snap into it. I'll meet you down in the library. Okay. Here's where we both turn back in the pumpkins. Well, cut my ears off and roast them over a slow fire. I see. Well, as soon as Uncle Wells comes in, will you ask him to call me? It's important. Thank you. What did you say? Take a look at John Barleycorn. <sighs> They're getting along wonderfully, aren't they? I don't believe it. Did he just come in? He didn't go out. I had breakfast with him. Liquid or solid? He hasn't had a drink since he got back. There's something wrong here. Maybe we've misjudged him. Say, what kind of a look is that on your face? Now look here, Joan. You ain't beginning to get I yourself... I ain't beginning anything. And if I were you, the last person I'd let know about it. It's the spring weather. You better drink yourself some sulfur and molasses. Come in. I beg pardon, miss, but the detectives are holding Mrs. Pemberton at the door. She insists that she was invited. Oh, yes. Mr. Pemberton invited her. Thank you, Birch. I'll take care of it. Well, we're all loaded. What do we do now? Move over here! Hmm? This is Mexico City! Oh. Well, uh, what do we do now? We unload it. Uh -huh. After we get it unloaded, what do we do? Load it, move back again. Load it, move back again. Stephanie, uh, are you sure we're getting anywhere with this? Well, we got to Mexico, didn't we? <laughs> Thank you so very much. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> She's grown. <laughs> yes. You look well, too, Francis. Oh, thanks. Well, I uh, guess I'd better... Oh, don't go. Well, I thought probably you wanted to talk to Stephanie. You two haven't seen each other in so long. Oh, that's all right. I understand. Well, no, it, it isn't anything like that. You lie, Mommy, don't you, Daddy? Well, yes. Uh -huh. Daddy, can I go and say Mommy? Oh, hush, darling. But I want to. Daddy's been very generous already. We mustn't take advantage of it. Can't I go and with Mommy just a little while, Daddy? Well, uh, yes, I guess so. You aren't joking, are you, Francis? Why, uh, no. You couldn't be. You just couldn't. Well, no, no, I, I mean it. You, uh, you can take her any time you like, any time at all. Something's happened to you, Francis. Let me look at you. No, don't turn away. What's come over you, Francis? You even look different. I do? Well, uh, I've been outdoors quite a bit lately. A lot of fresh air and exercise and sunshine. That might be it. No, that isn't it. It's inside you've changed. Oh. 
Why didn't you answer my letters, Francis? Letters? Didn't you get them? Oh, the uh, letters. Oh, there's Joan. I. Hello, Joan. Telephone, Francis. Uh, well, if you'll excuse me, I'll uh, see you later. The telephone. I'll send him right out again, Mary. Thank you. I asked Uncle Wills for the combination, but he wouldn't give it to me. He wouldn't? Doesn't trust me, I guess. He wants to talk to you. Oh. I hope you're not angry. Uh, about what? Am I asking Mary to come out? Oh, no, I'm glad you did. Joan, I told Mary she could take Stephanie any time she wanted to. I, I guess that was the right thing to do, wasn't it? Well, of course it was. I just wanted to make sure. Did uh, Uncle Will sound mad on the phone? Francis, I think it's high time you began standing on your own two feet. What if he is mad? Well, it's just that I... Uh, I well, it's your safe, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, it is. Hello, Uncle Wills? Wills? Hello, Francis. Why didn't you let me know you were coming back? Well, I, uh, I just forgot to, I guess. Now, what is this nonsense about you wanting to get in the library safe? Why, uh, I just want to get into it, that's all. Well, you wait. I'll be right out. Well, no, no, it, uh, it won't be necessary for you to come out here. Uh, just give it to me over the phone. Besides, I'm going to be pretty busy this morning. What on earth are you going to be busy with? Are you sober? Of course I'm sober. Now, look here, Uncle Wills. All I want is the combination to... What for? What for? Now, look. It, it's my safe, isn't it? Yes, it is. But... Now, Francis, you better put Joan back on the line. Now, you listen to me, Uncle Wills. Are you going to give me that combination, or, or do I have to come and get it? What did you say? Well, very well, Francis. Have you a pencil? Yes. Yeah, a pencil. Yes? Left 21. Left 21. Right 10. Right 10. Left 7. Left 7. Yes, thanks. He's out of his mind. If anybody wants me, I'll be at my nephew's house. All day? Yes, all day. Don't you realize what you did? You actually talked back to him. You're wonderful. Was I? Oh, wonderful for you. Oh. Sorry. Well, that's okay. Well, I, uh, guess I better get to work on that safe. Joan, how come you never got married? Well, looking after Stephanie in the house has kept me pretty busy, you know. And I guess the right man just didn't come along. You haven't any uh, commitments at all? No. Why? Well, I was just thinking that... Well, it's uh, natural that I'd be interested in your welfare, isn't it? Well, well, well. Oh, uh, uh, pardon me. Be right with you, Chuck. I... Oh. Take your time. Take your time. Whenever you need me, I'll be sitting right under the safe. Don't mind him. He thinks he's a middle-aged Cupid. Well, I uh, guess I'd better get that money for Chuck. Yes, I guess you have. Well, uh, Joan, it's, uh, it's been nice meeting you. Meeting you all over again, I mean. You know, I almost feel the same way myself, Francis. As if I'm just getting to know you. Well, as if for a long time you've been someone else. Yeah, yeah like me better this way. Loads better. Francis! Well, I guess you'd better go, hadn't you? Yeah, I guess I better. Stop looking so guilty. You remind me of a second story man on his way to the window. I, I do? <laughs> I don't know why I should look like that. Call again. Yes, sir. Chuck, we're practically on our way to Beaver Dam right now. When I think of all the trouble Arnold's causes, I feel like finding him and hanging one on his chin. I don't think we ought to do anything like that. He's such a good fella. Good? <laughs> He'd look good in the morgue. Oh, sh shame on you, Eddie. 
Mr. Arnold would look terrible in a morgue. Hey, shocking. Shocking, my friend. A room full of books and the pages of so many haven't even been cut. I see you haven't any feeling for books. And I know, of course, you have no feeling for paying your debts. Just what do you have feelings for, Mr. Pemberton? My name is Eddie York. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Sorry, that's why you spend the night here. It's also why you, you have the combination of the safe, and I'm sure it's also why your butler said Mr. Pemberton was in. <laughs> I'll have a look at this. No, wait a minute. This is not... Let Mr. Arnold look. Thank you, Mr. Long. You know, Mr. Pemberton, this safe rather reminds me of your head. It was meant to hold something, but it doesn't. It's empty? Yes. Completely. You know, Mr. Pemberton, it seems to me that... Daddy! Daddy, we're going! Is she calling you? Yeah, she's calling me, but I'm not... We have children, too. What a fortunate man. Everything. But a sense of honor. Daddy, where are you? Uh, all right, you may go. But be back soon for the sake of our courageous friend, Cluck. Chuck! Oh, Chuck, yes, thank you. Daddy! I'm, uh, I'm coming, Stephanie. Hi, Daddy, we're going. Goodbye, Francis. I know you're busy, so I won't try to tell you how grateful I am. Oh, that's all right. Forget it. Why don't you go too, Daddy? Well, I, I'd like to, Stephanie, but uh, some other time, huh? We're gonna have lots of fun, Daddy. I'm sure you are. Oh, it's okay, boys. The little girl ain't supposed to leave the house unless we go along. That's your orders, Mr. Pemberton. Well, uh, now you've got new orders. Okay, boys. Uncle Will will sure be mad, Daddy. Don't you worry about Uncle Will's. Francis, would you take time to read something if I gave it to you? Why, yes, I guess so. It's only a short note. Well, you needn't be frightened. I'm not asking for anything. It's just that... Well, you didn't get my letters, did you? No, I, I didn't. I know what Uncle Will's told you, but it wasn't true, not a word of it. Either was the evidence they brought up in court. I know that's hard to believe right now, but you must believe it. That's why I wrote this. Please don't throw it away, Francis. Please read it. Think about it. Well, we'd better go now, Stephanie. Thank you for letting me have her. You'll never regret it. Well, son, maybe leopards don't change their spots. But doggone if I ain't just seen a polecat change his stripes. Well, I haven't got time to talk to you now. Uh, now, now, don't give me any of that hanky-panky. I want to ask you a question. Well, uh, what is it? Are you sure you're the same poisonous hawk-sniffing scud we had around here till he lit out from Mexico? Why, are you sure I'm sure. Maybe I'd put on a little weight. But... Answer my question. Some other time, Grandpa. I've, uh, uh, I've got something to attend to here. Something to attend to? Where's who? Francis, you decrepit idiot. Don't stand there with your mouth open. Answer me. Don't you holler at me. Please, Grandpa. The sway back to old Moose coming in here yelling as if he owned the place. You operate the most annoying household, Mr. Pemberton. Yes. All I want is a simple answer to a simple question. Where is he? I'll tell you if you give me a chance. Well, where is he? Hey, Chuck, that's Uncle Will's. Yes, and your uncle seems to be quite anxious to see you, so we will step outside. I dislike so much being mixed up with family quarrels, Mr. Longcom. 
Please settle your domestic difficulties so we may proceed with our business. And remember, we shall not be very far away. Where is he? He's in Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to him less than an hour ago. Is everybody in this house gone crazy? He's in the library, Uncle Will. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? This is too much for me. I'm taking a powder. Uh, 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 you darned ornery, no good, mud wallowing catfish. I wish I had a baseball bat. Well, Francis? Well, who's that fool? Does he mean me? I want to talk with you alone, Francis. Will you get out? You stay here, Chet. Well, perhaps you didn't understand what I said. I want to talk with you alone. Well, go ahead and talk. Well, you're... You're acting rather peculiarly, my boy. You said you wanted to talk to me. What do you want to talk about? Yeah, get it off your chest. We got work to do. Well, you've been drinking, Francis. You're not well. Perhaps I better send for Dr. Van Meter. Uh-oh. Here comes the straitjacket. Look, you said you wanted to talk to me. Well, I'd like to talk to you. What goes on around here? Well, what do you mean? Well, the detectives outside and Stephanie not being allowed to see her mother. <laughs> well, those were your own instructions. Well, that's right. Um... Well, look, from now on, Stephanie can see her mother anytime she wants to. Do you understand? Why, no, you're not responsible. You're crazy. I won't allow it. Do you think I spent two years in court proving that Mary was an unfit mother only to have you? Why, don't you realize, you poor, deluded imbecile, unless you keep the custody of Stephanie, you lose control of half your fortune? I thought it was something like that. Uh, look, Sir Galahad, be practical. What about our 3,000 smackers? Oh. So that's why you came back. You don't think we bust into this squirrel cage for fun, do you? All right. How much do you want? Uh, 3,000. You better make it 12. We don't want to go through that again. Yeah, you better make it 12. We don't want to go through that. All right. 12 it is. On one condition. What's that? That you clear out. Go back to Mexico and stay there. Don't worry. I'll send you enough money. Okay. But I want Stephanie to be able to see your mother. That could be arranged. You have my word. You made that out of cash, It's already made out. I'll get you a reservation on the afternoon plane. Hey, check. This chuck is no good. I mean, well, look, he didn't make it out of cash. He made it out of Pemberton. Hey, Uncle Wills! Let your poor Uncle Wills alone. Just endorse that check. Endorse it? I can't endorse it. It'd be forgery. I'm beginning to understand why people like you are so rich. Sign that check before Mr. Long shoots you, please. No. <laughs> It won't be any good. Francis Pemberton. Francis. Don't say I didn't warn you. Don't know what I spelled it right. That's fine. Thank you. You don't deserve this, but I'm an honest man, even among thieves. But take my advice, burn these phony identification cards. Your 3,000 hasn't been touched. <sighs> Sorry, my friend. Thanks, Mr. Arnold. But that check... Shut up, you twerp. <clears throat> oh, uh, by the way... You have a first edition of David Copperfield there. That's not half bad. You ought to read it sometime, Mr. Pemberton. And you too? No, 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 no never mind. Goodbye, gentlemen. Yippee! We're all set! No, not quite. There's one thing I have to take care of before we get out of here. Look, mastermind, would it be too much to ask why you should be sitting down to write your memoirs at this point? writing letter to Pemberton. Well, what's this one? It's a letter from his wife. Ain't one letter enough? I'll tell the guy he better hightail it back here. I think he's taking the rap for a lot of things he doesn't even know about. You haven't got the guy's address? Yes, dilation of the pupils. A definite lack of self-control. Those are the symptoms exactly, Doctor. Well, he was going to Mexico, but... Yes, I'm inclined to agree with you. Yes, I think so, too. A quiet, private sanitarium. I'll bring him down this afternoon for an examination. Joan. What do you want? Why, nothing. I... Well, Francis is in a very nervous condition. I want you to go to your room. But Uncle Wills... Joan, will you go to your room? Yes? It's me, eh? Um, Francis. Oh. I'm glad you came. Joan, I'm leaving now, but before I go, I just wanted to ask you Francis, something. I've got to warn you about something. What? It's about Uncle Wills. Don't trust him. Please don't trust him any longer. You're going back to Mexico, aren't you? 
Well, yes. Well, then go right now. Well, what's the rush? Well, I heard him talking to Dr. Van Meter. He's going to put you in a sanitarium. Oh, <laughs> well, don't worry. He won't put me in a sanitarium. Please go. The longer you wait, the more... Hey, you're really worried about me, aren't you? Yes, I am. That's nice. Joan, do you like mink? Mm -hmm. What? You know, mink. Look, I'm going now, but I'll be back. Do you suppose you could sort of... Well, I mean, do you think you could take me at face value for... Well, for the time being, and not get yourself involved in anything? But that is for a little while until Chuck and I... I know it sounds complicated, but you understand, don't you? No, of course you don't. How could you? But never mind. Everything will be clear to you later. Oh. Will you take these letters and mail them to me in Mexico? Just send them to my regular address. Well, aren't you leaving for Mexico? Oh, yes, but I just want to be sure I get them. I, I mean, I want to be there when they get there. I <laughs> want to surprise myself. Francis, perhaps you should see a doctor. No, no, no. I'm all right. Just promise me you'll send them. Huh? Well, of course, but... And take care of yourself. Huh? Well, yes, but... I'll be seeing you. Okay, Chuck, we're on our way. It's about time. I still think we could have dug ourselves in here. Just a minute, Francis. Oh, get back under the house, you termite. There's been some difficulty about your reservation. It's just as well anyway. I want you to ride downtown with me this afternoon. What for? I want you to see Dr. Van Meter. And have me tossed in the sanitarium so you can really take over here. Huh? No, thanks. I'm leaving. No, you're not. <coughs> there he is. Son! Congratulations. Oh, thanks, Grandpa. <laughs> Say, you're not such a bad skate after all. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Say, uh, Grandpa. Huh? Will you uh, sort of look after things around here till I get back? Oh, sure. Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Chuck. So long, Grandpa. Good luck to both of you. <laughs> Step on it, we'll just be able to pick up our stuff and catch the train. That'll be eleven forty. Someone will pay you when you bring the bags in. Birch! Birch! Yes, sir. Get those two detectives in here at once. Oh, uh, uh, did, did you have an accident, sir? Yeah, an unexpected occurrence is more like it. You stop asking questions and get those two detectives in here before I have to fire them and you too. Oh, yes. And you keep your nose out of this. I have a good mind to have you put out of the house. Ha! You can't. I can't, eh? That's what I said, can't. Says so in the will. You can't do a cockeyed thing. You cover the grounds, you take the car and go down and cover the road to town. And bring him back to you, understand? I don't care if you have to use force. He's gonna start raving mad. All right, get going. Hey, he went that way. Hello, Birch. Oh! Uh, how do you do, Mr. Pemberton? Him. Get him! Oh, take it easy, partner. Everything's gonna be all right. Easy. Take it easy, partner. Everything's What's gonna going be all right. Here? Everything's gonna be all right. 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 Everything's gonna Jones, send for Dr. Van Meter and call an ambulance. You got a tough baby here, mister. Get off me, you halfwits. This is a fine homecoming. Okay, huh? Well, you still owe me $11.40, mister. $11.40 for what? For hauling this guy out here from the airport. I told you, didn't I? You mean that you... You just hauled him out here from the airport? Well, I ain't in the habit of dreaming these things up. Next time your elders and betters condescend to speak to you, maybe you'll pay a little heed. All right, let him up. Let him up, boss. You heard me, let him up. That's what I thought you said. You fools! Francis, I'm sorry. They took you for somebody else. Now get out! 
I'll give you 15 minutes to round up that imposter and I'll get out. Imposter? Joan, what's he talking about? While I was out of town, these two idiots allowed themselves to be taken in by some man who pretended to be you. You mean he took you in, don't you? <laughs> Let's go into the living room. But... Who was he? What did he want? Oh, some adventurer who read you were out of town and tried to move in. <laughs> he looked enough like you to be your twin brother. Why, you wall-eyed catfish, he was his twin brother. What? That's who it was. Twin brother? Yeah. Well, Mother and Dad told me I was adopted, of course, but they never told me I had a twin brother. Well, maybe they had some reason. But you got one. There's no question about that. Well, I can't believe it. It's true. I could have told you an hour ago if you'd had the wit to listen. They were identical twins. John and Sue would have taken both of them. Only the other one had been spoken for by somebody else. That was before they knew what a poisonous scud you were going to turn into. So I've got a brother. Hmm. Did he really look like me? A dead ringer for you, except he had a backbone. Grandpa. No, no, Joan, he's right. Well, he had a lot of nerve, I'll say that for him. He had that all right. There was something about him I liked. If I may say so, Joan found him rather pleasing too, didn't you, Joan? Yes, I did. Well, it's all very clear. You have a twin brother. He read about the divorce in the paper, looked up your ex-wife, and between the two of them, they cooked up a scheme to kidnap Stephanie. Kidnap Stephanie? I don't believe it. Well, is, is Stephanie gone? Oh, don't worry. They won't get far. Well, has anyone called the police? Yes, the police have been notified. It's all right. It isn't true, Francis. Mary only took Stephanie for the day. I know it isn't true. Oh, my dear child. Francis, that's the sort of stupid ignorance that I've had to put up with ever since you've been away. At least I prefer to think of nothing else. Just what do you mean by that? Well, it seems odd. It was made very simple for the intruder to get in the house, to get the combination to the safe, and persuade me to give him a $12,000 check. Of all the low-down copperheads, I... I... Oh! Uncle Wills, are you sure about all this? Why, certainly I wrote the check myself. No, I don't mean that. Let him have the money if he wants it. I mean Mary. Are you sure the things they brought up in court, the things you wrote me in your letters are true? Of course, my boy. It's all court records. The only reason I came home was... Well, while I was down there, I had a chance to think things out, and I decided that most of it was my fault. I thought if I pulled myself together, maybe I could come back and Mary and I could make a go of it again, but... I can't understand her doing a thing like this, uh, kidnapping Stephanie, I mean. Francis, how many times have I told you that a woman like Mary would stoop to anything? It's one thing you must do. Leave Mary to me. All right, Uncle Wells. I've been a lot of trouble to you, haven't I? Oh, forget it. I'm always glad to help you know that. Now you must be tired. You've had a long trip. Go upstairs, take a rest. Yes, I believe I'll do that. seems to be quite a fellow. You don't think he's a crook, do you? No. Strange as it may seem, I don't. Tell me, uh, how's Mary? Why do you ask? I just wondered. Well, I'm surprised that it should even matter to you. Did she fall for this brother of mine, too? It seems that everyone else around here did. I think she was a little startled to find that you'd become human all at once. That you weren't being led around any longer by Uncle Will's. I'm sorry you feel that way about Uncle Wills. He's just looking out for my interests. Francis, I didn't come in here to talk about Uncle Wills. I just came here to give you the letters and tell you I'm leaving. Leaving? Joan, you can't leave. I've made up my mind, Francis. Oh, I, I can hardly blame you. I know you've gone through a lot around here, but if it's because of what Uncle Wills said downstairs, I'm sure he was mistaken. About... Uncle Wills is mistaken about a lot of things. And just for your own good, Francis, don't believe what he said about Mary. The way he wraps you around his fingers is enough to make a person... Well, it's none of my business. Better read those letters. They might be important. Sorry. 
we'll take our things now. I thought you were coming back yesterday. Yeah, we had a little delay. Does he really like that hat? What's the matter with it? If you haven't found out now, you'll never know. Get your come hands on, come on, we're in a hurry. Good. Eddie. Anytime you're ready, Mr. Pemberton. I am. Mr. Arnold wants to see you. Shall we go? Wait, wait, your luggage and your uniform. We'll pick it up later. Arnold must have tried to cash that check. I shouldn't have done that. You're a fine gangster. What are they doing, breaking you in? You're smart, which I doubt you won't say anything about this. Why should I say anything? People come, people go. They never take their junk with them. Yes, I was right. You did just what I thought you would. Mr. Arnold uses psychology. Well, look, Mr. Arnold, you got us all wrong. I admit it's hard to explain, but... You'll admit anything, Mr. Pemberton, but you seem to have an allergy to paying your honest debts. <laughs> it's in that pocket, Timothy. Hand it to me, please. Oh, look, Mr. Arnold, you're not going to take my money again. Your money? You amaze me, Mr. Pemberton. <laughs> After bilking me out of it, you deliberately distorted your signature and that check to the bank wouldn't honor it. And now you're complaining. I told you before the check wouldn't be any good. How can I sign Francis Pemberton's name if I'm not Francis Pemberton? Get in the car, please. <laughs> Mr. Arnold, yes. get in the car. Pemberton House, Timothy. How many times do I have to tell you, Mr. Arnold? It's no use. Please, please. You're degrading both of us with your childish lies. Wait for us down the driveway, Timothy. We won't be long. I thought you were stone wall. Now, Mr. Pemberton, let me make myself very clear. Since money seems to mean uh, everything to you, and since you have in your library a few, well, not good, but fair first editions, I will select from those just enough to equal your debt, and I will allow you full catalog value. But I must warn you, if you attempt to trick me this time, I shall take it as an indication that uh, you are tired of life. In which event I shall have to ask Mr. Long to relieve you of the burden. Could you, Mr. Long? Very accommodating, ain't he? Come, gentlemen. Open it, please. I can't open it. I, I haven't got a key. I tell you, I don't live here. All of a sudden, a mink farm seems like a nice place to me. Uh, uh, Mr. Pepper, Good evening, sir. What's good about it? After you, please. He's here, miss. Oh, I thought it was my cab. Who's here? The other Mr. Pemberton, the bogus one. Where? In the library. You sure it isn't Francis? Oh, I'm positive, miss. I just brought Mr. Francis a tray. He's upstairs in his room. I must notify the detectives. The fourth one, please. Top shelf. Thank you. Another Dickens, Mr. Long. Dumbie and Son. Nice condition. 900. 900. Mr. Arnold, this is robbery. I'll say it is. You pay 5000 for Shakespeare and only 900 for Dickens? It's ridiculous. Um, now, the uh, fifth one. No, 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 the next one. Thank you. Now, Mr. Long. Good evening. Oh. Uh, hello, Joan. We, we uh, came back. Uh, well, I mean, we had to come back because... Uh, well, because Mr. Arnold here wanted us to show him some books. So I noticed. The check wasn't enough, so you came back with a second-hand man who... Please, please. Collector. What you really mean is a receiver of stolen goods, don't you? Joan, I've got to talk to you. I can explain all no, this. No, Father, the whole thing explains itself. I was wrong, that's all. And don't let me disturb you. You'll find the jewelry upstairs and the silver in the dining room. Good night. No, Joan, wait.
Even your own family seems to mistrust you, Mr. Pemberton. Uh, will you please guard the door against those uh, disturbing relatives? So we can finish our transaction. Uh, would you mind, please? Thank you. They're in the library. We got a phone first. What's going on here? If you're interested, sir, they're about to capture the fraudulent Mr. Pemberton. Dead or alive? They appear to be indifferent, sir. Hello, Donovan talking. He's back again. Nope. The brother says it's him, all right. Where? In the library. Good. You grab him, hold him until I arrive. But it must be done quietly, you understand? If you have to, gag him. Don't let him talk. He mustn't see anyone. If he gives you any trouble, you know what to do. I get it, boys. You betcha. We'll take care of him. He won't give us no trouble. Twelve thousand. Congratulations. Your obligation is finally settled. With the compliments with the house, sir. Thanks, pal. This is the kind of work I like. Now, gentlemen, if you please, you will take these books to my car. That's him. Hey, nice work, fellas. Hey, that ain't him. Very clever, Mr. Mr. Pemberton. Now, gentlemen, this is a mistake I'm afraid. This man is... Hey, Chuck, he's after me. Hey, you can't do that to us. They'll ruin our career. Hey, Grant, where's Joan? Right there. Oh. Joan, where are you going? Don't come near me. But Joan, don't talk to me. Grant, where's she going? Go after her. Don't let her get away from you. Go on. Go away. Patty cake. Now he wants to play patty cake. Stay where you are. And you too. And who is this character? Let him alone. Shut up. Well, where did he go? You got your book. Never mind the books. Where did he go? Where did who go? You know who, Pemberton. I beg pardon, he... Uh... Yes? Oh, nothing, sir. Is that thing loaded? Ah, don't ask such idiotic questions, please. Now listen. Oh, are you a member of this peculiar household, too? Unfortunately, yes. Mm. You better put that thing away before somebody gets hurt. Just ignore him, Mr. Long. He's old and feeble-minded. Now, who's in there? Detective. Oh, washroom, I presume. That's where they belong. Uh, sir, I find all this utterly intolerable. I really feel I must resign from my position. I don't blame you. Mr. No, let him go. He will bend our way anyhow. Thank you, sir. And don't go near a telephone. You might regret it. No, sir. Yes, sir. Chuck? I find I have become rather fond of you. In a way? In a way. Mm hmm Thank you. You know, my friend, you are quite clearly one of nature's favorite creatures. Ignorant, but happy. That's why I hate to think of what is going to happen to you. Happen? To me? Mm -hmm. You see, I know very well that you will not lead us to your dear friend without a certain amount of persuasion. And I always hate to see people suffer because of some uh, mistaken loyalty to a scoundrel who doesn't deserve it. But uh, you give me no other choice. No. Well, let me see. This is just a little too public here, Mr. Long. Uh, will you please show our unfortunate friend into the library? Proceed, please. Uh, you better come with us, too. I'll do no such thing. Oh, perhaps you would like to take us to Mr. Pemberton. I might. Then again, I might not. Oh, I see. Yes. Shame on you to make such a proposition, sending out your own flesh and blood. Mm. At your age, too. Awful, isn't it? Yeah. You interest me, you know. You don't interest me a bit. What I want to know is, which Pemberton is it you're after? Is there more than one? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no there can be. I want Francis Pemberton, the worst Welsh that has been my bad luck to deal with in years. That could be him, all right. Oh, I see we speak the same language. About him, we do. What do you want with him? Oh, just a business matter. And to get it settled, nothing would give me as much pleasure as to beat your relative within an inch of his worthless life. Probably needs it. Might do him a world of good. Now, I'll tell you. 
You go into the library and I'll get him for you. No, I won't be long. You go in and sit down in the library. I'll be back in a minute. Don't go away. Mr. Long, this is an experience we will never forget. All this money and not to one sane person in the house. Oh, hello, Grandpa. There's a man downstairs who wants to see you, Francis. Oh, well, I can't see him now. No, I think you ought to. It's pretty important. He says you owe him a lot of money. Well, who is he? I don't know. Gentle sort of fellow, seems like. Somebody you had a lot of business with, I guess. I can't imagine who it could be. Well, maybe when you see him, he'll kind of jog your memory, Francis boy. Where is he? Right in the library there. Go right in, Francis. You'll find him waiting for you. <laughs> you wanted to see me? What's the idea of the makeup? What's been going on in here? Why, you and me was picking out the books here to get... Oh, cut out the double talk, Getty, before this torpedo blows you to pieces. I beg your pardon. I cut it out. These mugs ain't kidding. Well, Mr. Arnold, uh, what are you doing here? The ship masquerade is over. What masquerade? Pretending you're someone else for two days. But I just got back here. Oh, you've got me mixed up with my twin brother. He's been around here impersonating me. Your twin brother? <laughs> he's not Eddie York anymore, Mr. Long. No, no, he's somebody's twin brother. These inventions of yours, Mr. Pemberton, are becoming really sickening. And instead of just beating you up, I should get rid of you right this moment, as a public service. <laughs> oh, but I cannot do that. Because of so many witnesses and spies around. Hello. Hello. Come in. I don't know as I want to. You don't seem to be getting nowhere. Don't worry, we will. I thought you were going to lick the daylights out of him. You will not be disappointed, don't worry. Now, Mr. Pemberton, Mr. Arnold, what do you want? What do I want? All right, I will tell you. Again. Two years ago, you placed a bet with me. Yes, I remember that. I lost $12,000 to you on a horse at Hialeah. Oh, your memory is improving. But what's wrong? You act as though you hadn't been paid. Your intelligence is improving also. Well, this is very embarrassing, Mr. Arnold. I I had to leave the city, but I told my uncle to pay you. He evidently overlooked it. He certainly did. I'll make you out a check right no, now. No, 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 if you don't mind. No checks, please. Well, you've never refused a check of mine before. Would you mind writing your name, please? Not at all. Francis Pemberton. Are you sure it's your correct signature? Of course I'm sure. You seem to have an honest face. Thank you. No, not you, you. Okay. Is this his signature? Yes, that's his. Thank you. When are you going to beat him up? All right, make out the check. Hey, Grandpa, is that him or him? Oh, that's him. But, Joan, I tell you, I didn't know I had a twin brother. Well, can't you see? I, I had to pretend I was Francis. It was the only chance I had of getting our $3,000 back. You could have told the truth. Or every time I did, nobody believed me. You wouldn't have believed me, would you? All right, I agree with you. I wouldn't have believed you. And furthermore, I don't believe you now. Oh, Joan, listen. Eddie, Eddie. The guy is back. Yeah, I know. Joan, listen. But he's right inside, paying on a law for yes. Yes. Joan, this is what I've been trying to tell you. I can prove the whole thing to you now. I hope I haven't caused you too much inconvenience, Mr. Arnold. Inconvenience? Oh, no, not at all. Just... Here's your bum check. With all your money. Bum check? Here's your wallet. Well, that isn't my wallet. Well, uh, the next time I see you, perhaps you... Mr. Long? Mr. Arnold, where did you get this check? Why, you... Oh, no, no, never mind. Strange. Strange. 
strange case. Well, this must be the check Uncle Wills was talking about. Of course it is, you, 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 oh, look here. Oh, Mr. Arnold, you got your money, didn't you? Could I have my wallet? Just a minute, just a minute, just... I think I begin to understand. So he's, uh... Francis Pemberton. Yes, he's, uh, and you are... Uh, I'm Eddie York, that's what I've been trying to tell you. We're mink ranches, only we ain't got a mink or a ranch. Well, 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 Mr. Longworth, you made such a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Some joke. Look, Mr. Arnold, could I have my wallet? Huh? Oh, yes, yes, of course. I'll join you at the car, Mr. Long. Yes, yes. That's right, Eddie York. I've done you such a great injustice. My profound apologies, Mr. York. Thanks. Look, Joan, there's our $3,000. Now, do you believe me? Yes, I do believe you. Let's go, Eddie. We're off to the minx. Can I give you a lift into town? Why, uh... Yes, thanks. Eddie, before we leave, would you go in and talk to Francis? Talk to Francis? I don't want to talk to him. What I want to talk to him for? Well, he thinks that Mary kidnapped Stephanie. He does? Kidnapped? Well, he can't be so stupid as to think that. Didn't somebody explain to him yes, that I Yes, someone was... did explain to him. Uncle Wills. Oh, I see. He also called the police. Uh, excuse me. I, uh... Um, I believe I, uh... Well, you know, kidnapping police. If you don't mind, I think I run along. Goodbye. It's a pleasure. Goodbye. All right, Joan, I'll go and talk to him, but... Can't you send him a letter? You like to write letters. Send him a nice long letter from Beaver Dam. No, I better straighten the guy out. Thank you, Eddie. I hate to inflict this on you, but... Well, that's all right. But, Joan, before I go in, I... there's something I want to tell you. Chuck, will you uh, keep an eye on Joan's bags? I get it. A little more. You know, when I came to your room this afternoon to say goodbye, when I thought Chuck and I were leaving? Well, I know I said a lot of things that didn't make much sense to you then, but... Well, at the time, I figured the sensible thing to do was for Chuck and me to go back to Beaverdam. And then after we get all set, I mean, a place to live, why, I was going to come back and ask you to marry me. You were, Eddie? Yeah, but, well, I didn't go, and you're leaving here anyway, so that changes everything, doesn't it? Well, yes. But I think it's better this way, don't you? Because, well, now we can all go back together, and, well, while you're fixing up the house, why, Chuck and I can be working with the minx, and how does that sound to you? Well, Eddie... Hey, Eddie, I know you're not interested, but do you hear that siren? Uh, what siren? Coming up the driveway. It's the police. And they no fire engine. They've got Mary and Stephanie. I'll take care of this. But how? Well, I've been Francis for two days. I guess I can stand it for five minutes more. But Francis is in there. If he comes out here and finds you pretending to be him, he... We can both take a ride in the wagon. Yes. Look, uh, you two stall the police. Don't let him get near the door. Well, yes. Don't worry. I'll take care of everything. Now I know we're in trouble. There. Now I've told you about your Uncle Wills. It's hard to believe all the things you say about him. Well, they may be true. But I'd, uh, I'd like to hear his side of it. Hey, Mac, give me the nail file, will you? Mr. Pemberton! Well, 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 if it ain't the funny man. Likes to play games, don't he? Likes to lock doors. Wait, wait, you're making a big mistake. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Close the door. Close the door. Grant, the police have got Mary and Stephanie outside. Don't let him out of there. Just a minute, officer. Oh, uh, officer. Are you Mr. Pemberton? Yes, I am. We got him. Oh. Well, uh, officer, there's been a little mistake. That's her, ain't it? Well, yes. Francis, what a horrible thing to do. Well, I'm sorry, Mary. Mommy didn't do anything, Daddy. No, I know she didn't, Stephanie. They're not going to take Mommy in jail, are they, Aunt Joan? No, of course not, darling. Uh, Mary, she's tired. Why don't you take her up and put her to bed? I'll take her. Uh, I'm very sorry about all this, officer. I thought this was a kidnapping. Well, no, uh, not exactly. You asked us to pick him up, didn't you? Well, yes, I did, but it, uh, it was a mistake. Oh, it was, was it? Say, what kind of a razzle-dazzle are you people trying to pull? You think we're on the taxi service? No, 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 no. Uh, I'm sorry, officer. Well, thanks very much. Uh, good night. <clears throat> You've done your duty, officer. Why don't you and your buddy uh, just take a powder? Yeah? Mm. Just where do you fit into this? Me? Yeah. Say, he looks like someone we might be looking for, don't he? 
Yeah. Now, just a minute. I didn't know, and you better not eat us, see? Yes, sir. You better watch your steps, see? And see that you keep out of trouble, see? Yes, sir. People that can't make up their minds, wasting the taxpayers' money. Francis, you must be out of your mind to humiliate me like this. You told me I could take it. You told me yourself. I know, Mary. Then what happened? Even if you changed your mind, all you had to do was get in touch with me. Well, Mary, I... Well, uh, Mary, don't you think you'd better go upstairs and help Joan put Stephanie to bed? Francis, you've got away with some pretty queer things in your time without accounting to anyone. But this is one time I want an explanation. And I want it from you. Well, Mary, the only thing I can say is that I didn't do it. Then who did? Well, it, uh, it was Uncle Wills. Uncle Wills? With your knowledge? That's ridiculous. Francis, did Uncle Wills know when he telephoned the police that I had Stephanie with your permission? Well, you see, I... Did he know or didn't he? I want to know. Oh, you two weak need to tell him. I was so hopeful after this morning, Francis. It wasn't just that you let me take Stephanie. It, it just seemed so changed, so different. I thought about it all day. And until the police came, I even let myself think that... after you read my letters, perhaps... Oh, well. It's no use. Uncle Will says you so completely mesmerized that... Have you no spine of your own at all, Francis? I know he'd do anything to keep you under his domination, but... Oh, uh, I'm sorry for railing at you like this. You are the way you are, and I guess there's nothing to be done about it. Well, I'll go up and say goodnight to Stephanie, and then I... Oh, hello, Grandpa. I didn't realize we had an audience. <coughs> well... Don't let me interrupt you, Mary. I don't know but what sometimes an audience is a good thing. Well, yes, uh, I think maybe you're right, Grandpa. If he had any brains in that skull he is, Francis might do a little thinking. What? She's waiting for you to tuck her in, Mary. Oh, thank you. I'll stop and see Stephanie a moment, and then I'll go. Uh, Mary, I'd, uh, I'd like to talk to you before you leave wouldn't do any good. I don't say that. You're a swell person, and I certainly haven't treated you very well. And if I have any sense at all, and I, uh, I hope I have, I, it might do a lot of good. I'll be waiting for you in the library. All right. She's in my room. Thank you. <laughs> well, son, I guess she did it. She still thinks there's hope for him. You sure you heard what she said? Oh, he's no account, but I'm sure he ain't deep. Joan, do you still think I ought to go in and talk to him? Son, sometimes it's wise to step aside and let nature take its course. When Mary comes down, his nibs can pick up where you left off or not. But I still think it's best that Mary should never find out there was two of you. Maybe you're right. Yeah. Well, Joan... Oh, uh, Grant, will you excuse us a minute? Oh, please, of course. <laughs> Joan, you never did get a chance to answer me outside about going to Beaver Dam, I mean. How about it? Well, Eddie, it sounds wonderful, but getting married is something a girl ought to have a little time to think about. Oh, sure, sure, I understand. I'll uh, give you two minutes. Pardon me, in case anybody cares, there's a cab coming up to drive. Oh, he would turn up. Who? Uncle Will. The detective called him. Well, if he gets a chance to talk to Francis before Mary does... Oh, that... you're right, but there's nothing we can do now. Well, there ought to be something. Oh, look, Eddie, you've done your good deed today. Let's go out the back way. Haven't you told Francis what a sucker his Uncle Wills is making out of him? I tried to. So did I, but he wouldn't listen. Do you think he'd listen if Uncle Wills told him himself? Yeah. Of course he would. Chuck, go on outside. <coughs> no, no, out the front way. I want him to see you. And hold that can. And watch the bats. And, Joan, you better get out of sight. Grant, don't let him upstairs. Keep thinking about that, will you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't had so much fun for years. <laughs> don't go away, buddy. Oh, it's you, eh? Yeah, you want to make anything out of it? I'll attend to you later. Well? Have they got him? Of course they got him. <laughs> Uncle Wills. I haven't time for you now, Francis. Where is he? He's in the library. Isn't he, Grandpa? Huh? Yeah, yeah, in the library, yeah. Uncle Wills, I want to know what's going on here. This doesn't concern you. I'll see you later. You said that before, but he's made some pretty serious charges. Charges? What charges? Against whom? Against you. Why, that's ridiculous. Did you see him? No, no, but uh, Grandpa saw him. 
You meddling old fool. And uh, while I was away, Mary wrote me some letters. What happened to them? I destroyed them. Uh-huh. Why? Anything I've done in your absence has been done entirely on your own behalf. I want you to go to your room, let me handle this affair my own way. Now, just a minute. I found out that Mary didn't kidnap Stephanie. She didn't? No, she thought she had my permission. And you knew that when you called the police. Well, I can explain everything, but I can't be in two places at the same time. Now, go to your room until I call you. As for you, you doddering old nitwit. Aren't you? Come on, Grant, we don't want to miss this. <laughs> what goes? Congratulations. I told you we'd get him. Tell you, sure you don't want us to soften up for you, boy? No, I'll call you if I need you. Not just a little bit. No, get out. Okay, boss. <laughs> well, my fine feathered friend, it didn't work, did it? Now, don't get excited. I know every charge you can make. There's nothing that you know or say that could anyway embarrass me. It merely happens because his stupid nephew of mine is back here mooning over that vapid ex-wife of his. You have a sort of temporary nuisance value. I also turn you over to the district attorney. Instead of that, I'll make you a proposition. Now, you need money, don't you? Good. Now, if you'll promise to get out of here and stop meddling in my affairs, I'll make good that check I gave you this morning. If you don't, I'll take you downtown and I'll guarantee one way or another to put you behind bars for the next 20 years of your life. Do I make myself clear? Why doesn't he get him to untie him, the fool? Well, is it yes or no? Huh. Good. I knew you'd see the light. All right, now. Get up. Now take off that dressing gown. Get out of here immediately. Thanks, Uncle Wills, for letting me know how stupid you think I am. What do you mean? You've made a little mistake. I'm Francis. Francis? Why, I was just talking... I don't know exactly what you're trying to pull, lying to me about Mary and sending me off to Mexico. But whatever it is, it's all over, I can tell you that. Now, wait a minute, Francis. I can explain... I know, you can explain everything. But you'd better save it for the auditors. Because I intend to find out for whose benefit you've been operating my affairs. And I'm sure I'll find it hasn't been for mine. Now get out of here. Why, but my dear boy... Oh! Hey, he's done it! He worms turned himself from inside out. <laughs> I said get out of here. And stay out. Are you having any trouble, boss? Trouble? No, you blithering idiot, you numbskull. Get out of here. Go on, you're fired. Get out of this house. Go on. Get out. Don't say anything, Mary. Just forgive me. Oh, Francis. And stay here like this. He's come to his senses at last, thanks to you, son. I kind of wish I'd met him. He'd be worth meeting now. I don't think now is quite the time, Grant. Eddie, everything is all straightened out. Can't we please go? We gotta catch that train. Oh, that's right. Come on, Joan. Oh, but Eddie, I haven't said I'd go yet. Oh, you haven't, have you? Well, uh, will you? Of course you will, won't you? Oh, well, yeah. There you well, are. Hi. <laughs> Goodbye, Eddie. <laughs> Goodbye, Grandpa. Goodbye, Joan, dear. Goodbye, Chuck. Goodbye, Eddie. Right. Now, oh, wait a minute, Joe. I've been doing, Uncle. This is our cab. <laughs> That's because you don't lead a clean life, like me. <laughs> Sorry to rush you like this, Joan. It's all right. Hey, we'll take our things now. Are you really going to take it this time? Yeah, come on, snap into it. We have to catch a train. Try to hang on to it. Please try to hang on to it. If you don't take it this time, I... Oh, no, you don't. What a guy. Come on, give us the package. Here, I'll help. You can have a little. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Adler. I force I have, but... Relax, Eddie. Relax. My compliments. For me? What is it? Open it. The guy is probably a bond. I knew something would happen. It's all right. It's a gift. I regret so much the inconvenience I've caused you. This is a little gesture of apology. 
Hey, this is wonderful, Mr. Arnold. Thanks. Joan, Chuck, look. What are they, rats? <laughs> They're nature, fathead. They are, aren't they, Eddie? Sure they are. Very good. Here are the papers. <laughs> I don't know what to say, Mr. Arnold. Joan, this puts us right in business. It's beautiful. Hey, I almost forgot our train leaves in 10 minutes. Thanks again, Mr. Arnold. My car is right outside. The boys will drive you to the station. Fine. Please, but not again. Come on. Wish I knew how to thank you, Mr. Arnold. Oh, not at all, my boy. If you ever come to be for be sure and look us up, huh? Thank you, thank you, Eddie. Here, Chuck. Be careful of those. Goodbye. Goodbye, Eddie. Goodbye, miss. Goodbye, clock. Uh, Chuck. <laughs> I love to see happy people. So do I. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. You know, we've been so busy, I haven't had a chance to tell you how pretty you are. Well, you can start right now. I hope I don't have to listen to this mush all the way to Beaver Dam. Chuck can ride in the club car, can't he, Eddie? Sure. Chuck in the mix. <laughs> if anybody had ever told me, I'd end up as nursemaid to a... Hey, Eddie! Hey, Eddie! Hmm? Uh, what's the matter? I've got the DTs. Why, they... Who they have? One, two, three, four, five. Five kittens. And we've got 250% profit already. <laughs>